I, I'm a little confused. So like, Megan called us out literally for all of our choices that we've made through this game so far. I decided to give my passport to my brother-in-law. I, I didn't see where my son went at night. I let my daughter have a- th this is- I'm so confused. Hey, I'm broke ass poor still. Day 154, a rude awakening. The rhythmic beeping of the heart monitor brings you slowly back to consciousness. Opening your eyes, you're greeted by a semicircle of concerned faces. Your family, by your side. A reassuringly familiar sight in these new surroundings. You blink a few times to clear the sleep from your eyes and bring everyone into focus. You feel a hand on yours. Gentle, but reassuring. Sam, there with you always. Their expression, understandably concerned, is somehow more affectionate than ever. We knew you'd be okay. Never doubted it for a second. And if I ever see that Bozeman... You squeeze their hand back and attempt to wink. The worry lines on Sam's forehead fade a bit. Lord knows you both got enough to be anxious about without your health being thrown into the mix. With a final smile at them, you turn to the rest of your family. Just as you feel Susie's absence, you notice Charlie fidgeting, clearly trying not to look worried. As soon as you turn to look at him, you can see Charlie tense up, his concern, his concern, concern clear in his face. So, you're definitely good, right? He finally asks, quickly looking away. Of course I am, Petty. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. Charlie looks at you and grins, one of those infectious smiles that spreads around the room. It's always good to have him in your corner. Your smile fades as you notice your mother, staring listlessly out the window. Despite all of your best efforts, she's not doing la well lately. Are you okay, Mom? You've been knocked out since that electric shock from last night. Oh, actually, that could be possible. That could be true. Then that whole thing was just a fever dream? That makes a lot of sense. Your mother starts, your call clearly shocking her out of her reverie. She turns to you and smiles and you're grateful to see the increasingly rare recognition in her eyes. Yes, dear, of course. How are you feeling? You smile warmly and nod, but before you can respond, a doctor bustles in and ushers everyone out. She asks you, for what feels like the hundredth time, how you're feeling. Surprisingly well, all things considered. Excellent! There's no sign of any real damage, just a bit of a shock to the old system. Pardon the pun, she smiles. You are right. You are right. It was the electric shock. That whole last thing was all just a fever dream. Not that we'd recommend you do anything like that again, of course. After a couple of days rest at home, you should feel right as rain. She turns to leave but stops at the door. Oh, and the private room in care. The doctor gestures to your room, which you now notice looks rather expensive. Has all been paid for by Mr. Boseman. He left those flowers and said not to worry and to take the rest of the week off. He'll see you Monday, apparently. Seems like the least he could do. Thank goodness, I couldn't afford that. Healthcare in this <laughs> economy? <laughs> Day 180. A burden to bear? Oh, thank God that bear is not going to be inside my office anymore. That was so bad. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'll just- I'll be patient, I'll be patient. <laughs> this game is way interesting. Okay, so everything I learned from the last one is not canon. So that one guy's still alive then. <laughs> Day 180, a burden to bear. You come home from a particularly late shift to find the kitchen lights still on, which isn't normally a good sign. Everyone's usually in bed by now. Softly opening the kitchen door, you find Sam sat at the table. Bills and papers are strewn in front of them, as well as what looks to be their second pack of biscuits. They give you a quick kiss as you take a seat next to them. Sam frowns and goes back to the bill they're holding. Hey, sweetheart, just looking at the numbers again. They look to the door of the pantry, now converted into your mother's bedroom. Ooh, We've been doing our best, but I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look after her now. Suddenly the bills are all you can see. I've been staring at the numbers all night. Tears in their eyes. Sam takes your hand. There's just no way we can afford it. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. The kitchen table swims before you. Care plus- Holy shit! So many. Ugh. Numbers. 
Sam stands up and pulls you into a firm embrace, but all you can think of is your mother and how you can't afford to help her. What would your dad be thinking now? Is this the utopia advance promised? You stare at the door to your mother's makeshift room. Tomorrow, you'll need to tell the kids and then book an appointment at the transition center. What else could you have done? The transition center, I think, is is the thing uh, that they help you die, I think. So they're basically choosing to euthanize his... Oof. A letter home. Sam's out with work tonight, and Charlie's staying at a friend's. The house is yours. You order takeaway, have a couple of drinks, and decide to relax in front of the TV. Not a great selection tonight, but surely something to watch. Let's see, comedy... Sam's not here, but you can still watch a horror without- No, thank you. You just want to switch it off. Action thriller's the one. Sam isn't a fan of historical dramas. I think I deserve a laugh. <laughs> the humor is a bit hit and miss, but the joke about the kiln has you bent doubled in, it, in laughter. Wiping a tear from your eye, you spy something reflecting the light of the TV under the coffee table. Curious, you reach down and bring it out into the light. And as you pick it up, you remember the note Sam left for you. Hey, sweetheart, Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind looking for it tonight? As you hold it closer, you're surprised to find the gift's actually an engraved lighter for Chippy. She claims the nickname's affectionate, but Charlie still scowls every time she says it. You're not sure Sam would approve. The accompanying note from Susie explains, Urkistan has a long tradition of glorifying the art of starting fires. Thought you'd like it. Don't do anything stupid. Suze. Hopefully it's just a souvenir and not a new pastime he's picked up. Or about to pick up. It's nice that she thought of him. Are my children arsonist? I am raising rebellions! Two, three, two. Oh! Okay. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I've been living in a paradise ever since you moved on me. <laughs> I don't know all the words, okay? <laughs> Why does Chippy sound familiar? The silence. What? You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Oh, she's getting mean. No, it won't be alright, Kath. Pack up your weapons Sports and board. optical destruction and get out. Prison meal. I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Oh, one of my things broke. Decision, Jeremy. All yours. It'll be alright, I'll talk to both of you. Oh good. Oh, get well soon. His wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. My phone's bashed. I'm sorry, Kath. You're gonna have to leave. Oof. Yeah. Ever since she got the second anchor, she's been getting meaner and meaner. I thought we were all part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy. You know that. Just stop being so high mighty and do your job. Four, You'll have me fired too. Three. Don't tempt me. Good evening. I'm Megan. She's so and I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headline is tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. Uh oh. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What do you think about all these sanctions? I doubt it make a lot of difference, Pet. <laughs> I've lived through two world wars and I smoke 40 a day. And if that ain't killed me, I doubt this will either. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Oh! Fascinating stuff. Uh, a little dark. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. <laughs> Huh? We are a democratically elected government with massive... Oh, I almost forgot about this thing. We do not recognize these sanctions. 
and we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Dude, it Diplomat doesn't. Stuff. And I but don't... what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. Huh? What? Something's going on. I don't know what's going on. It just crashed? Huh? Huh? What? My game just crashed. Okay, I'll just open it up again. That was weird. Like... A little pop-up came up and it had a bunch of random stuff on it. None of it made English sense. And the symbol for the game and then it loaded a little bit. That went away and then the whole game crashed. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> what was that part of the game? It's kind of hard to tell when something's part of a game with all the meta games that have come out lately. Huh. <laughs> Oh, I've been living where the food is free. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Shit nuts. Wolf. It looks like your game didn't close properly. If you're experiencing issues of any kind, please reach out and we will try our utmost to fix them for you. Wait. Where is it going to continue me? Okay, I'm still in the silence. We're good. No, it just crashed. <laughs> I wonder why it crashed, though. Do I have too much stuff open? Not even. I don't- I'm not a type of girl who has a thousand tabs open. That's weird. That's just too much. Too many tabs. I've been living where the food is free. Sanctuary. Roll and sundry. Another gree? Wait, I think I get it now. Since you've made advance on me, advances, it's because the company that runs everything is called Advance. I think I'm getting it now. Now I gotta wait for this insanely long loading screen again. <laughs> oh, never mind. Small jump there. Okay, let's try this again. Thank goodness I had all the power on. Or, uh, what? it saved. You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired yeah, today, today, now. Protection for men. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be alright. No, it won't be alright, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical but destruction sports and get out. board. You realize you're beginning to sound I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? This okay. is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. Or yours. It'll be alright. I'll talk to Bucks Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. Hmm. I don't Jenny. know what that button does. And his very first guest is popular parrot. I'm sorry, Kat, you're gonna have to leave. At 11.30, it's a double bill for popular transatlantic comedy that night. Letting it go to your head. She mm. nearly blinded Ten me. Ten seconds, everybody! I thought we were all part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy, you know that. Just stop being so Three, high five, and mighty and do your job. Four, You'll have me fine, three. too. Don't tempt me. She is Good becoming evening. so I'm mean. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. Angry. The sanctions, which are broad-ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. 
What are your reactions to the sanctions? Angry man. Offering is fucking outrageous. My mom needs insulin. Am I supposed to get her transitioned? What's the government doing about it? Hey? Ah. Hey? Thanks, Patrick. Fascinating stuff. I feel like that's kind of how you should react. Julia Zoldring has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. Okay. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognize these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. Sorry, what was that noise? And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have Did our anyone own, else hear that? It was like rely robot on the help footsteps. Of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, think Anger. of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. Anger! I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. What? That shower of iridescent pricks <laughs> punishing success and rewarding laziness. Pricks is a bad word. Country, down the bloody okay. swanny. And it's not just me that thinks so. My wife Iris, she agreed. Over to you, fellas. Global mega corporation Remington's Fist today announced that trials have successfully completed. He isn't even speaking anything. Contraceptive product responsibility. The drug has been passed by the government for general release, but the small print warns that, in rare cases, side effects can include blurred vision, enlarged genitalia, and increased risk of stroke. No double entendre intended. <laughs> so what do you, the Sorry. Think of Sophia Remington's that was like a joke. Venture? Patrick. So what are your feelings on the new contraceptive pill? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> a big step forward for equality. Sophia Remington is the best thing that has ever happened to that company. A momentary lapse of reason? Commuters across the capital found themselves somewhat bemused by the latest stunt by a controversial protest group Disrupt. In a baffling start to the day, commuters found performers outside every major station all dressed and posed identically. Whether we're supposed to be amused or intimidated is anybody's guess, Jeremy. But most commuters didn't even stop to notice. I'm wondering if I should well, go against the system, you know? Contemporary dance, it's probably harmless. But how do we all feel about Disrupt and their eclectic tactics? Robin found out. How do you feel about Disrupt? Oh, well, now you're talking. Ruddy hero, showing us not to take it lying down like Iris here. <laughs> so Wait, you what? feel there are calls worth supporting? Oh, well, Iris doesn't speak on mine, but we're pretty sure there's still one in there, aren't we, love? <laughs> Wherever it is, it loves Disrupt, fighting the oaks for our freedom. And what can possibly be wrong with that? Do you need me to get you some help? <laughs> Oh up. no! In oh no! Dr. David Wong and Dr. Ingrid Sforsborg and Hawkinsford today sent a blueprint of the escape Dude. craft which they hope to finally leave Dante's taint. With what? expert opinions of the plan running the gamut from optimistically engineered to that looks like something my granddad made in his shed, it sounds like the unfortunate team are going to need all the thoughts and prayers they can get. Operation so Escape, let's leave. About the escape plan? Patrick Bannon again. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, they're going to cut all this, aren't they? It's disgusting. Right. Oh, Jesus, sweat. Have you, Christ, have you thought about quitting smoking? Right. No, I'm fine now. Okay. What were we talking about? The trapped scientists. Oh, yeah, right. The trapped scientists. Brilliant. <laughs> I am not a number. Applications finally <laughs> opened today for the new advanced team. That was really good, cards, Davey. A scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks, and, rightfully, pubs and bars. Is that a good thing? And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. That all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? 
team membership card. Oh, yeah, fantastic. I'm applying today. I mean, why wouldn't you? What are these protesters doing? They don't want us to know who their names are. Besides, oh, have maybe it was a bad thing. You can get. I'm getting one for the little one as well. Oh, how adorable. Yeah, <laughs> going to be a proper little team member, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> he smiles. He smiles. And finally tonight, back of the net, Popular sports personality Johnny Hounsleeves and his fiancée Tiffany Lamour were spotted out today doing a little shopping for what many are already calling the greatest wedding ever. We can only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected. Ew! Nope, I dropped it. Looks of things, the whole dropped it. About to My Teenage Secretions? Ooh. I don't know who that is. But what should your opinion be of this extravagant <laughs> display of wealth? Disgusting. <laughs> One Later word. Tonight, in a bit of a switcheroo, it'll be Jeremy in the culture chair, spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss. And then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again. Oh That's god, it's gonna be the same tonight. group. National Nightly News. Huh? Oh, it's doing it during this. Dude, those two are super angry at her. She got a little too big for her britches. Make my green noodle good. First tonight, thankfully, some okay. news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and Bjerk? potentially illegal Bjerk? sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions, which come into effect immediately, aim to stop the flow of food, fuel, and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. Tonight, oh God, this is a sweary guy. To discuss this unprecedented situation, for advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? Oh, I don't scare that easy. I'm afraid, old son. I like his Neither accent. The people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovich, Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan. <laughs> Ivan, thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure. You, Megan Wolf, hold that like bottle. The strongest guy of the Labour camp will wake up inside body of crazy, expensive prostitute. In my country, you will be worshipped as a god. Okay. Uh, Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Advance is like man who think he a big career in movies land, when actually he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at me and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Svenland, then. We have like some of the cleanest mental health facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svenland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have your surname. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive surnames here, yeah. Minister? <laughs> it's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk, your country spoke in favour of advance at the World your Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise. The hippies didn't show up for the fight. Actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole, like, vote thing, yeah, but it's actually the festival of Furelands here at the moment, where we honour the old generations. So, like, we all had to look our grandparents clean, yeah, whilst the vote was happening, and Ooh. it's like a really, really time-consuming Can we just watch them like normal people? You're like a sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man? He's like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, because... stop winding him up, Ivan. We're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always win. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> Peter, you're like man with tiny penis who think he have tiny penis. <laughs> Everything penis about this guy is just about penis. Oh, could it be? No, it's tiny penis. Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world sees how well we're doing, they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what these sanctions are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. I don't even know what's going on. Shut the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. They can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svenland, we have like serious. I'm surprised no one swore yet. I like my friend Helga. She got arrested yeah, for killing a butterfly that was hovering over her fuel thing. I mean, oh. an English uh, jam sandwich. I used to know a girl called Jam Sandwich. She was a right cracker too. Huh? 
We seem to be wandering a little from the news here. What? Um, Human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So uh, if you're watching, Jan, give us a call. Really? Yeah. Let's see if we can't organise a reunion. Crash, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it past sure Mrs Clement that. first, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you're like man trying to empty ashes of her uh, mistresses into oncoming vent. Uh, soon you have tiny penis and beard full of secrets. In Spendler, we don't really go in for all that restricted monogamy stuff. Here. I'm so confused. Okay, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, and um, briefly, if you would, gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and possible, power possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, it's happening. Possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarise your thoughts for us, uh, Minister Beard? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid really arguing about outdated devices, concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction. I think I read a manga about that. <laughs> Your country is like man who think he invented perfect trap for giant Newton hairy bear. But really, he's just standing in field holding, holding his tiny penis. Yes, thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here. Uh oh. Uh oh. I got the censor. Don't everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't even lose a wink of sleep. We knew the rest of the world would react this way, and we're ready. As me old mum used to say, you can't make a shy pie without blocking a few tits. Huh? Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring. I got it. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. After One minute back. Hey, Peter, I over your way this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure. Front or back? <laughs> what is going on? I hope you're asking Megan Wolf for me. Oh, it's the board, uh, sports board, uh, board game me. thing. Thank you for the call. But like, well, you have to be more careful. It's all part of his long-term plan to get fired live on the news at six in front of the nation. Can someone warn him it's going a little too well? Oh, he wants to be fired. Shit. New government censorship should show up in blue. Same as regular censoring. Keep an eye out for the advanced blue waveform. So now I have to censor red and blue. So... Are you still meant to bow? Foreign royalty. What? They're back! Honey, have they given you the Crown Prince report? Well, Megan. This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's kind of right. Yo, just a quick point. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in 10 what? seconds. Because he put that get up on himself. What? 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 <clears throat> going in five, four, three. There's multiple things. Three. I saw someone beating the shit out of someone else. Welcome back. It's something about a chimp. Later, we have an exclusive well, sorry. first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. He That's really wants to get fired. Jesus. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honor to be here on your show, the news. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. But yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. Right there in my arms. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. <laughs> Wait, she died in the charity home. store? I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. <laughs> what? 
What a tale. What a tale. Your known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just um, I try not to talk about it. It's just um, it's just too hard. So hard. But my first album is about the story. The not hard enough. I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Sorry, I forgot to. Family. I forgot to keep moving stuff. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Should I even censor this? Maybe I shouldn't censor it. homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Like, my phone's broken. Maybe I didn't, you know, get the word. Nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like... Why do I have to pay for it, you know? Why do I have to pay you don't. For it, you know? People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Mm. I worked hard to be here. I built this from What if he is filthy and I rich? To be rewarded for that. And I to be Would you say you worked harder than, say, Would you say a you farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, music, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children, Mr. Cheese Slice. What is it you're trying to say? Uh-oh. I just don't understand where you've placed yourself politically. I mean, is it going to be a fight? Ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like maybe it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. I let the music and the people agree with me. And the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Lovelow's Tears. Oh no, um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is. Uh, Unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. <laughs> he wants to get fired so system. bad. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Oh no, I'm gonna have to censor so much. It's Jesus! First. He just grabbed his nuts! You're gonna pay him. Well, we're all different races from many different places At any given moment, only one could be the greatest So you can feel elation from your participation Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation Now we're getting sanctioned Oh shit! Talking about his no! Mansion. Why does Julie require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes, I don't need your freaky team And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams So many F-words! Just don't drop any so other any other words. When you'll find you one of us. Yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus. And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me. But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy. I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive. But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive? Although it's contravention of your obvious intention. I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention. You make us the same, but we're not all the same. All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same. The best of the praise of the press of the wave. Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves. Take his fat, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit Fuck it, I ain't censoring blue or shit The motherfucking bitch for So this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks to feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business out of dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal 
you make us the same But we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the brave serve the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for there's a lot of swears going on right now. There's no way I could censor all this. Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red, gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head. Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for. It's time to storm the past and read the motherfucking bitch for. Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking dream. Of course, they were gonna make me censor a whole fudging rap song. This is a scene, cause they're stale and corrupt, then you ain't gonna run. How was I supposed to censor all of this? Your fist to destruct. Like, how, how would you, like, that whole song would have to be censored. Jay's us there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs. And an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I just like to say to you, everyone at home, that this I didn't was a censor all of them. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe it. Absolutely Here at the National Nightly News, we I didn't censor shit. Well, except for swear words. Unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. We will never censor. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Um, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing... I purposely didn't censor the blue. We'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about... Maybe I got a, a word or two on accident. Go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you, fixing that on the VCR. No, no, it's a ridiculous... When a new tape, last ad break. Just a mix up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask oh, you to leave it. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. <laughs> this is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. I think I'm going to go against Advance. Because I think Advance is being dicks, so I'm going to... <laughs> do what I can, you know? Fight the man. Oh my god, I got a D for that because I didn't censor all the, the blue. <laughs> That's okay. I was already broke ass poor. What's stopping me? Nothing's stopping me. <laughs> I'm definitely like not even halfway through this game. Because like look at all this other shit that I'm supposed to like probably have and do. And I don't know what those are. Jeremy, you remember Mr. Algebra? Oh! And Mr. Harris, and this is Ms. Raiden. What? Philippa, please. You're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh? Absolutely. Who would have thunk it? This is awfully exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay then. We're going live in ten seconds, opening on camera one. Five. <laughs> Sorry, the only three. thing I heard of that whole thing. Welcome back, and no, you're not mistaken, Welcome sitting back. across from us are some very familiar faces. <laughs> you really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yogurt really commercial, kind, but I'm Megan. still proud of it. <laughs> Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by <laughs> national treasure Tommy Harris, <laughs> the national theatre's <laughs> Philip Ray, <laughs> and national deficit <laughs> Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to training sometimes. He's a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> so Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, 
What in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. What? Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, uh, <laughs> give us a sense of what the show is actually about. Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it like really get into the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris. Jesus, that was hard. <laughs> Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the, the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. I'm You're sorry, an sorry. embarrassment. But Dad, embarrassment. you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the house! <laughs> what the fuck? Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with <laughs> Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of what? training what is going boards on? at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. <laughs> and for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. Well, what's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh, Mr. Harris's show really lets me what show is my going on? tremendous range as an actor. I've always suffered. From She's showing her range right now. She's like putting hats on and doing all sorts of different stuff. Is in every god awful yogurt advert or god forsaken soap opera or god forbid a pantomime. But you know this 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 show has really let me just just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show. What is it? Oh, that good you question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder. He's just always course, asleep. It really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions <laughs> are immeasurable. This is a really he quick, so subliminal. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? <laughs> Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. <laughs> You'll never take the sacred path! <laughs> the fuck is with the wizard? Am I right in saying Stop. this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, was actually a lifesaver, really. God, I love this game. I, we say I love this game support, so much. I'm right there with you. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Did this just say Wizard Lollipop Man? Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? For what? Death. <laughs> and the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <laughs> and people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. It's unbelievable. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, are they going to? That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow uh -oh. when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us. The most attractive horse? That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey. We must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> she is showing oh, such oh, awkward no. body language. Oh, and he did too. <laughs> okay, it's just normal people outside. Okay, that was weird. At least I got a B for that one. Oh, a D.
You have received your full wages. Current wealth, broke as poor. <gasps> Worrying debt. That's higher than broke as poor. Hey, and my share has gone up. Because I keep showing their ads. Ooh, advanced is starting to hate me. The resistance is starting to like me. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just continue. I'll look at the archive later.